Alrighty, welcome back then to another episode of PK's Lab. Uh, today we're going to be looking at what's the magic behind the rapid fire magic secret sauce that they're doing. Um, so what kind of, what are they doing to the analog waveform after it comes out of the video modules um, to make things work better in a multi-path environment? And what does it do when we get down to sensitivity? So let's talk a little bit about what makes up an NTSC or PAL waveform the basic components of it. So I'm going to flip over to the other camera and we shall continue. Okay, so this is a generic timing diagram of some sort of analog video. I uh, don't actually know if it's NTSC or PAL. I apologize. I just did a quick Google image search. Um, so basically you're looking at the baseband video signal um, and then the voltage is the vertical axis and the horizontal axis is time. So there's a couple key components in this. Um, there's the horizontal and vertical blanking. So you can imagine your screen being split up into lines and each line has a little beginning and end marker. And so that's what these little drops down here. So this is a line of video and this is the horizontal blanking marker every time it drops and you can kind of see the line or, or in this case the field because it's interlaced the field number up the top um, and they're saying uh, odd field first or even field first for each one of these traces it's a little confusing because they have all these going on here um, but essentially if we just focus on one line we can talk about what's going on so again this trace has fields that are coming through and then this region here is the vertical blanking. So it's got a different kind of pattern. You can see that when the horizontal blanking happens, it lasts for a certain amount of time, and then the video information comes through, and then horizontal blank blanking happens again. And you can kind of see that the the time for the vertical, vertical blanking, the amount of time that that signal is low, is lower, and then it alternates to an inverse pattern, then goes back to low, and then continues back in its normal. So that's kind of like how the, in the traditional sense, the electron gun would have reset from being at the bottom of the screen to being at the top when it sees this pattern. It would kind of drive it all the way back up to the top of the screen and then basically arm itself and then start displaying video. So let's look at what an individual line looks like. So let's zoom in on one of these fields here. So that would be this guy. Um, so again, there's a, a sync pulse. There's a color burst because we're dealing with color video um, and then the actual active video image and you can kind of see the, the color burst has a, a reference waveform that has some phase and some frequency to it and it's a certain length. All the specifics we don't really care about. All we care about is that these things happen um, and we'll be looking for them as we put the rapid fire through its different modes and seeing whether the rapid fire itself is generating those or if our external camera is generating them um, and how things are interacting. So basics are uh, back to the basics again. Uh, the image is split into lines and each line has a, a marker on it at the beginning of the line. And then at the beginning of a whole frame, there is this sequence of pulses that we see. So let's see what it actually looks like on an oscilloscope. So we've got this oscilloscope set up. You can see we've got two traces. The top one is the green one, and the bottom one is this pink fuchsia, whatever thing going on. So this is the raw video out of an analog camera. Um, and this is the output coming out of the side of my fat shark modules that was received by the rapid fire. So basically, this is what's going into the video transmitter. This is what's coming out on the output of the receiver after being processed by the rapid fire. So again, on both of these, you can kind of see the, the vertical blanking happens in there and there. And then this is kind of where the video starts. You know, it's the, the kind of the, the lines. So let's take a look. We'll kind of zoom in in time. Sorry, there's a little bit of delay when I'm running this, so we'll zoom into what a line looks like, just because we can. So this is kind of like the first line of actual video. 
So if you notice again, we've got the horizontal sync pulse, excuse my finger, um, the color burst, and then kind of a line signal starts happening. And then if we scroll over, you can see it repeats again for, for the next line. All right, so that's the basics. Let me show you guys an external camera view of what our test setup is so you can kind of see how uh, I've got everything set up and then we'll go mess around with putting good signals and bad signals in the rapid fire and seeing what it does. All right, let's do it. Okie dokie. So let me show you what we got for a setup here. We've got the oscilloscope watching it with a camera or a cell phone and it's got two channels again uh, the first channel comes up over here to this HS1177 going into our signal generator um, and that comes down to an antenna here on the table that's pointed at our rapid fire and our HD2s and we also inside the HD2s have a USB webcam that you're going to see where's my finger in the upper right hand corner here Boop. Sorry, there's a delay. Um, and then also the output from the rapid fire, the analog video, comes out into channel four of the oscilloscope, which is the magenta slash pinkish trace. The scope itself is synced to the HS1177, so that's the green trace at the top there. So anything that the rapid fire is doing or receiving over there, even when we remove the signal, like if I show you now, whoop, kill the signal, and you can see the scope still is locked on to that. All right, so let's get the module itself in frame and show you what we got for settings. All right, so we're gonna start off in legacy mode, just so that, oops, sorry. So we start with a known baseline. Let's let the menus, oh, sorry, I should show you what version we're running. There you go, 126. That's the official release. There's some beta ones. I think 128 is the current beta that's available, and they changed some of the timing on how fast it drops into and out of rapid fire mode for people that are racing. But we'd rather just run with the official firmware because that's what we've had for a while, and it seems to work well for most people. So, all right. We'll let this thing time out and let's get testing. All right, we're good to go. So again, in the upper right hand corner here, that's our uh, video feed that we see inside the goggles from the USB webcam that's looking in there. Um, and the scope is on the upper left hand corner. Let's see if I can make it a little bigger for you. Hopefully that doesn't mess stuff up. So Again, we're kind of zoomed in on the waveform. Let me zoom out so we can see everything. This is the vertical blanking interval in there. And then we you can kind of see our horizontal sync pulses, the little lines, and then our actual video starts. So we're going to kind of look at this general region and maybe focus on like the first couple valid lines of, of video. All right. So let's just go ahead and do the simple test of removing the RF, so basically turning our video transmitter off. And you can see the video output just goes full noise. So that's good. The rapid fire is not doing anything fancy to try to fix up the video signal, which is what we expect because we're in legacy mode. So let's go into mode one, which is where they're doing all the fun stuff. Let's see if it gets locked. All right, so you can kind of see the bars at the top there. He's got rapid fire lock. Um, I can increase the signal strength here to make it get a little stronger. All right, and what we're going to do is we're just going to remove the RF again. And we'll see what he keeps making. So you can see he's still got the vertical and he's got the horizontals in there. Um, and he's got his couple lines of display text, and he goes to this. 
So let's zoom out a little. You can see he's still doing the verticals, but no horizontals. And now everything drops out. So let's do that again so you can get a rough timing of things. So we restore our video signal. And you can see there's two steps there. There's one step that's like AC coupled, where the video signal is a little bit off. And then it clicks in like a second later and becomes DC coupled. So let's see if that's corresponding. Next time we do this, let's see if that corresponds to when the OSD shows up at the top of the screen. So I'm going to remove this video signal now. So you can see he's faking out the horizontal and vertical sync pulses and still trying to put the OSD on right in there. And now he goes like AC coupled. He's only doing the vertical syncs. He does that for a couple seconds and now he just goes to full, like not trying to fake anything out. So that's kind of interesting and kind of cool. So there you go. They have two stages in the 126 firmware. So the one stage lasts for a couple seconds there where he's trying to fake out all the pulses. The second stage, he's only trying to fake out the vertical sync pulses. Um, and then he just gives up after a couple seconds after that. So let's go into mode two. Let this drop back. All right, so we're in mode two, remove the signal, and you can see no pulses are faked or anything, which explains again why we don't see any of the, the weird rolling images and that kind of stuff in mode two, because it's just doing some kind of fast diversity combining algorithm. He's not actually um, faking out the horizontal or vertical sync pulses. And we can take the signal level itself and we'll I'm gonna step it down. Those pops that you see are just the attenuators in the signal generator um, stepping through. You can kind of see I've got a little Wi-Fi interference here but he's not doing anything to fake out the pulses. And we can put things back into mode one and just like we saw before hopefully he keeps generating the horizontal and vertical sync pulses while we while we get into the static. All right, got rapid fire sync. Uh, interestingly, it appears like we don't. I don't see the thing at the top, so let's see if he actually got it. Oh, there, he got it back. All right, so we're going to step down the signal. So you can see he's trying to, and we'll let it hang out here. So I'm trying to leave it in where it's not doing the on-screen display, but still regenerating the pulses. And, I don't know. It's interesting. I don't know if that shows us too much. So actually, I want to do one more quick experiment and then show you guys that um, in mode two, how he's actually doing the diversity combining. Uh, let's see if I can come up with some fancy way to show that. Um, give me just a minute. Let's see if I can get something set up. Okay, and we're back. So let me show you again what we changed in our setup. We got our little, this is a separate camera now that we're going to be using. So we just have them set to race band 8, 5917. Um, and we're changing our signal generator over so that it, it's actually going to generate just a 5 megahertz deviation signal at 1 kilohertz. So it's going to make a little bit of a 
overlay on top of a video. So let's actually see what that looks like real quick in the upper right. Make sure I got this. There you can kind of see it coming through on the video. All right. And then again, the oscilloscope. Now we only have one trace. It's the channel four magenta slash pink one. That's the analog video coming out from the H the module. All right. So let's uh, let's have some fun. Let's get the camera back in place. Make sure you guys can see what we got here. So we're going to start with rapid fire mode one. Yep, rapid fire one. Let it do its thing. Synchronize. All right. Let's actually pick this. There we go. You can see things nicely now. All right. So we're going to turn on the source of interference. And again, it's going to create a moire pattern or something. So again, this is mode one. So he's trying to maintain sync. He's going to do that for a bit here. And if we make him mad enough, I might have to turn up the amplitude of the interferer just a little bit. He'll usually not be very happy. He loses lock. And we give it a couple seconds comes back and you can see there's two stages for it coming back there's like this AC coupled mode where you saw like this part of the signal was kind of slopey and then it locks into like the DC mode where the rapid fire is is driving the sync um, so let's do that again so he gets real mad there hmm. that was different that time might not have So he's unlocked. And it came back quick. Interesting. Well, we're learning something together, right? Oh, I should mention I only have one antenna, as you can see, hooked here. This one's receiving the signal from the camera over here, and then the bottom one is going to our signal generator. So when the signal's off, he should be essentially receiving almost nothing. That's really not the case because there is always a little bit of leakage kind of coming around, so he's probably receiving a very weak signal onto the input of the rapid fire module. Yeah, so you could see that was interesting. So he holds on for a couple seconds there. Uh, I don't know if you guys are counting at home. This is probably easier with the YouTube clock going on. So a couple seconds and he lets go. And as soon as I remove the interference, it comes back. And then you can see when the, it's kind of like almost correlated when that OSD pops up for the rapid fire module, um, the it comes back. Let's move this guy a little further away. Let's give him a little... So again, let's turn the SIGGEN on. Looks like it loses lock pretty quick there. Let me reduce his level just to give him a chance. This is a very subjective test in a way because the signal level has to be strong enough to make the rapid fire unhappy with its lock, um, but not be too strong to mess up the video decoder in the fat shark goggles or the the line lock here in the oscilloscope. So it's a little tough to make it exactly repeatable, especially as I'm moving stuff around here in the lab. 
Let's try this again. 2D be stronger. Let's see how long it takes to lo lose lock. Let me click it back on. Or interfere off, I should say. It comes back quick. Interesting. So very cool. All right, let's see what it does in mode two. So in theory, this should just be combining the two signals um, and no, no attempt to restore the sinks or any of that kind of stuff. Move the camera a little bit closer. We'll try this again. All right, turning on the interfere. And there you go. You can kind of see he's just continually combining the two. So let's see if there's like a crossover point. Can't really tell. Like it just seems like it's continuously combining the two, um, and not doing anything specific. Let's see how this compares to uh, the legacy mode, which is our society based, supposedly. All right. So this one should stick with the, so right now I have the interferer on, um, but it should stick with the antenna number one um, until the absolute signal from the signal generator is higher than the input from antenna one, which is over there. And it's actually, it's doing a good job because I'm bringing the signal level up, 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 and there it is. It popped over. You can kind of see the that sine wave comes in. So if you're running mismatched antennas, so like if th this kind of explains what we've seen. Uh, some people have, have said they've seen when they're in rapid fire mode two and they have mismatched antennas uh, and they're flying long distance, you know, that they run into problems because it's trying to combine the signal from both of the antennas all the time and their high gain antenna has a good signal, but their omni, their low gain one, uh, is in the static. So their their actual receive signal ends up being worse than um, than if they would have been in legacy mode, where it would have just stuck to one receiver or the other. He's not trying to combine the two signals in legacy mode. He's literally just picking one or the other. When you're flying far away, your high gain antenna probably has an 8 dB better SNR than your Omni. Uh, hopefully it would. Um, so that kind of goes to, to follow along with what we've seen in the real world. That um, if you're going to fly long range and you have different antennas, use legacy mode. If you have two high gain antennas, um, you should prob might want to consider using mode two because it's always going to try to combine the signal from the two of them um, and just make sure that the, the the two beams, the beam width of the two antennas overlap nicely. Like you're not pointing them 90 degrees off where the beams are only 30 degrees wide. Then you'll have this giant null in the middle and you'll kind of have the same problem as when you have a high gain antenna and an omni, you know, where it's trying to combine the static in with your good video signal. So hopefully that was helpful to people um, or at least interesting. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys on the flip. We'll still stay locked to this one so we can see if there's any drift in the sync pulses and which pulses are actually there and which ones aren't. So again, these are the horizontal sync pulses we're looking at and this is the kind of the first valid video line coming out of the camera. So we're moving the signal. You can see the rapid fire continues to inject the horizontal pulses. Oop, bumped it. And he continues to do the verticals for a while. And then full lot of nothing. And I forgot to actually show you guys. So 
So we're in rapid fire mode one. So that kind of gives you a basic idea of what rapid fire is trying to do. And part of the time, so in that first part where he's actually doing the um, both the horizontal and vertical sync pulses, he's still trying to draw that on screen display, which is what I believe, you know, if you've got a, a poor crystal, like a crystal that's not crazy accurate in your camera itself, um, that's when you can get that weird rolling image where the rapid fire thought it was locked on well, but the, the amount of error between what the rapid fire thinks the correct video clock is and what your camera is actually outputting drifts enough over the span of a couple seconds that it causes the rolling. Uh, yeah, so let's see. Yeah, let's see what it does in mode two. I haven't actually tried this, so we'll be doing the same thing together. Let's learn together, right? Wait for the screen to clear up. Turn the RF on. Hmm. Well, that's Pinteresting. Very interesting. So I think we may just have found a bug with the rapid fire. Let me see if I can troubleshoot my shut up. Boop, boop, boop. All right, we're going to power cycle a rapid fire. Let it do its thing. All right, so we're in legacy mode. So in this case, turn the RF off. This goes to full static. You can see he's not trying to maintain any of the sync pulses when it comes and goes. All right, let's go back to rapid fire mode two.